Gabriel Slonina. We call him Gaga. That is his nickname here in the US. 17 years old goalkeeper from Chicago Fire. He's very good. I had a, a chance to watch him a few times here on TV. And uh, he's very promising, okay? But still a kid though. 17 years old. And uh, Chelsea were already working on this transfer. But because of the sanctions, we kind of abandoned. But we're still on it. And uh, other European teams also are checking on him. So we are not alone anymore. But if the Americans take over at Chelsea Football Club, I think they're going to get the job done. This transfer is going to happen, people. And uh, people will ask, why are we going for a goalkeeper? We should just go for Haaland and other, and other target. But listen, Chelsea also is a business at the end of the day, right? You never ask yourself where the money is coming from. The money that we are playing, we are paying employees, you know, we are paying players. All that money is coming from somewhere. That's why the loans that we, we loan our players out to get some money and balance books. And now that the sugar daddy is gone, nobody is going to give us free money anymore. We have to make our own money. So... Buying this uh, kid here and loaning him out and get a loan fee of two to three million a season is a good business in my opinion. And who knows, maybe one day he will play for Chelsea Football Club when he grows up. But it's going to be very difficult to do because the goalkeeping position is about one spot. Okay, let me show you his profile here. Okay, he's very tall. Look at this. 6'4". You know that I like tall goalkeepers. I'm not a, a, a friend of short T-Rex goalkeepers. And this guy, just being tall, is kind of okay with me. But at 17, you never know how he's going to turn out. Donnarumma was at Milan since the age of 16 when he got his chance. Today, he's only like 22, and he looks like uh, he's been there for 100 years. But he's still very, very young. So why are we going for a goalkeeper, you might ask? Well, like I said, business, but also the future. It's all good. But we have so many of them. Look at this from the academy here. We have Lucas and Teddy, very, very good one. You go to different ages here. In the Chelsea Academy, you're going to find many of them. Many of them won't ever play even one game for Chelsea Football Club. But that is the nature of this business, my friend. Lone Army. Look at goalkeepers. Six of them. Nathan is killing it at Hull City. Jimmy having a good season. Sammy, Ethan, and uh, Carlo. So we have... The future is already here, but... It's just very difficult. When you have Mendy, you have Kepa, you have Marcus Bettinelli, it's going to be always very difficult for any young goalkeeper to make it a Chelsea football club. But, like I said, there is nothing wrong having another, another candidate for the loan army who is going to produce some money for us in order for us to keep going. We don't have a big, a big stadium. We need all kind of... Uh, resources that we can get so he might be the third american to sign for chelsea football club after matt miazga christian Pulisic, and now it's gonna be him but we don't know yet but i am suspecting that when the americans take over they're gonna explore more the american market because for commercial reasons but also because of uh, very very good players are coming from the mls right now if you go to um to germany right you go to the bundesliga so many uh, players from the mls 
and MLS is not like uh, the retirement uh, home anymore. People are coming from South America, Africa, from everywhere, even Europe. And it's it's like uh, the next step to get to Europe. You know what I mean? So we have so many bowlers here. But the stereotype ag against certain nationalities or certain races, you know, you know, Americans suffer from that. English people, Africans, it's always, oh, they can't do this because they are from some part of the world. But hey, MLS is getting to the the next level and in few years from now you're gonna be surprised how many bowlers are gonna come from the mls keep your eye open when todd Bowley takes over at chelsea football club we're gonna see few more americans in the team and i love it jill kunde still on the chelsea radar same old same old Two years that we've been talking about this brother here. Oh my goodness. Everybody want to hear about Tijil Kunde, right? <laughs> How can you even say no to Tijil Kunde? How dare are you not to endorse Tijil Kunde? Because he's the, the hot property right now in the Chelsea community. A lot of theories and narratives. As you can tell here, Kunde and Tuameni are superior to Rice and Mount Bromes. Many people are convinced that the only reason Chelsea are going to spend money on Rice is just because he's friends with Manson Mount. Come on, man. There are intelligent people there who went to college like four years <laughs> to study. And you think that they're going to just make a decision just to please a player. Come on. <laughs> if Chelsea doesn't sign this player, I officially give up on this board. And then you can give up because you're going to be always disappointed with the Chelsea board. And probably it's not going to be the same board. When Todd Bowley is in the house. So Kunde, as you can tell, Everybody want a Kunde, but these are not official report. It's just like people like you and me, or journalists or pundits thinking, listen, I think Jesse might go. I think, maybe, maybe not. It could happen. Because you never know what the new owner is going to decide. Because they are coming with scientists. Okay? Daters. We have geniuses coming with Todd Bowley. So we might not even see anybody that we are cheering right now, you know. Forget about Kunde, forget about, you know, Fofana, you know. Probably we're going to go for for some people that, that you never heard of, but because the daters are pushing us to go for them and they're going to fit to the system, we can go for them. I, I'm I, I'm giving up even on rice. Everybody knows that I've been pushing for rice. But if we have to give up on the, the big names and go for data base kind of recruitment, and you find me somebody from Argentina or from Soweto, South Africa, something like that, you find me somebody who correspond to our data so who can do the job. That is the way I want to see my Chelsea from now on. Sick and tired of agendas and insults and theories and narratives. Depend on the guy that you don't like or depend on the nationality. Or, I'm sick and tired of that, man. Chelsea are willing to get uh, <laughs> 75 million on Romelu Lukaku. It's going to be a big, big L, right? You know, so Paul Torres also been scouted, but when you hear the word scouting a Chelsea football club, forget about it. Right now, nobody can really tell because the new owners we don't know what they're going to do. So, yeah, it is what it is. And 
I was talking about Romelu Lukaku for 75 million. <laughs> that is a big L. 100 million. And after one season, we sell him for 75 million. And I tell you, we're going to be very lucky to get 75 million out of Lukaku. Unless if we can, like, make a deal where they have a payment over five or six years with some conditions that if he wins this and that and when if he scores this and that man um i don't know we're gonna have it to take a big big l to let lukaku go because he's on a crazy amount of money at chelsea football club and we bought him i don't know Whoever signed that deal needs some investigation. <laughs> yeah, so as you can tell, uh, those are just speculations, my friends. Nothing official yet. Just waiting for Todd Boyle to take over so we can start planning on everything. 